Hello Internet, Nintendo Reviewer here, and as I said, I am bringing you a full Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. This is the start of my Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play series. Now, as I said, I've already played through Treasure, Treasure Trove Cove, Mad Monster Mansion, and Free ZZ Peak as my holiday and seasonal Let's Play specials. So, I'm just going to basically insert those episodes into this overall series. So, what I'm going to do this year is just play the rest of the game. And I thought I would start off with the intro. Very catchy intro. And for those of you new to the channel, if there, if there are any of you here who are new to the channel, the reason I'm doing this is out of excitement and anticipation for Banjo and Kazooie finally making their way to Super Smash Brothers, as they'll be DLC characters for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Right, yeah, this is the copy of the game that I was playing. So I'm just gonna clear this out so I can start from the beginning. I love that it's so 90s that he's playing a Game Boy, too. Alright, here we go. So yeah, this is part one of the Let's Play series, starting with Spiral Mountain. And of course, the intro to this game, or Banjo's Call to Action. You can also check out my Let's Build video where I built the exterior of Grunty's Lair in LEGO Worlds. Just making sure everything's rolling. Ew. Ew. Yeah, whatever you say. This kind of makes you think, had Dinkpot just kept his mouth shut, this whole thing would have been avoided. Uh, <laughs> Grunty would not have tried to kidnap Duty with her being better looking than Matilda, which is not hard to do, <laughs> to look at her. But, had Dinkpot said nothing, there'd be no adventure. No call to action. No violence. And there's little Tootie. Who curiously never appears in Banjo Tooie. No one really knows why. Bottles them all. It looks like he's gonna be in the like a background character in the Spiral Mountain stage too. Well, we're going on an adventure. You're not. Not really. <laughs> I want to go on an adventure too. What the hell, Banjo? Come on, man. Off camera violence. <laughs> it's so many of these voice effects where just a bunch of programmers in a recording studio just That's how rare did things then. get started playing. Right away, there's bottles. Tell us what to do next. 
And yeah, you can skip through all this dialogue if you hold the A button, if you want to. That's nice they included that. Don't worry with the cheap insults. She flew up to her mountain lair where you'll be fighting Mario. <clears throat> Press A if you want me to teach you some basic moves, or B if you think you're already good enough. So all this means is if it's your first time playing, then you want to press A so you can learn all the moves as you go along, or just press B, which I'm gonna do. Let's see, okay. I'm just gonna press B because I mean, I've played this so many times. And then I'll still just go around Spiral Mountain and collect everything that I can. So yeah, that that's all it is. That he gives you the moves. So it's basically if you want a if you want him to give you a very hands-on tutorial, or if you want him to just give you the moves and then you just figure out how to do them, or if you already know how to do them, then just get right to it. So right here, this is where he teaches you different ways of jumping, and specifically this one for the extra honeycomb piece. And all the enemies are unleashed. It's still weird, the bad guys are onions and carrots. Not a good message to send to children. Although, if children already don't like their vegetables, the kids who are playing this, they're like, I don't like vegetables, pow! And to be fair, onions do make you cry. Yeah, so you can tell that the way this is all structured, it is structured around learning all these basic moves, like these basic, these jumps and attacks. It doesn't really matter what order you destroy these rocks in, or these boulders. The honeycomb piece is still going to be in whichever one is last. See? So I just go like that. That's how I always do it. So he teaches you... That attack, so you can see the attacks that are going to be in Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> Where he teaches you how to climb trees. I do remember that not long after this game came out, because Donkey Kong 64 came out like the very next year after this game came out. So it's like I played through, I think, the first level of this game, and then I played Donkey Kong 64. Because I got both those games at the same time when I got an N64, and it was pretty weird. I sp pretty much spent that Christmas playing this game, and then from there, learning how to play DK64, because a lot of the controls are very similar. Go, huh? So then the... Yeah, as you can see... It was, I'm just kind of talking like this, just in case there's anybody who's very new to Banjo-Kazooie. Maybe you guys weren't alive when these games were popular. So that's why I'm kind of talking this way. So, as you can see, not a very big level. Very small tutorial level kind of home, home base for Banjo. Hence the pleasant music. This is where you would learn to swim. There, I got my extra life. Sweet. Go. And the rest of the time, all those honeycomb pieces are more spread out throughout all the levels. There's only two in each level. Here I go, around the spiral mountain. I can kind of see why they did this though, because gaming in a 3D space was still like a big new thing. Even though it was shown off in Mario Kart, not Mario Kart, in uh, Super Mario 64 two years prior. But still, it was a big thing, so all the developers wanted to take advantage of it and really show it off. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. If you press A 
you know, just learn all the moves. As you get to the different molehills that are around Spiral Mountain, then this bridge will actually be broken until you learn all the moves. So that's another reason to just get your moves ahead of time and save time. But again, you'll still want to collect all the honeycomb pieces for extra life. No, no. Don't make me young and too old. <laughs> you fat hag. You're not really wrong. As mean as that statement is, she's not wrong. <laughs> not sure why he talks that way. He stretches out all his S words. There he is, the fun begins. My tricks and traps, we'll see who wins. Yes, we will, Grunty. Yes, we will. All right, so here I am in the, I guess you call it the front lobby of Grunty's Lair. This is where your very first place will go. Let's get your very first Jiggy. I like this method of entering new levels. at the very core of the collectathon concept. Okay, now before I place this Jiggy into the picture, oh, I forgot, I don't have the talent rot yet. But before I place the Jiggy, I want to show you guys one thing, especially for those of you who are new to Banjo-Kazooie. Like I said, maybe you were a PlayStation guy back in the day, or maybe you were born in the early 2000s. I know I have some viewers who were born in the 2000s, so they didn't get to play this. You can go in to Banjo's house. Uh, oh, yeah, you can get on the roof, but it's easier to get on the roof once you have a. Oh, okay, never mind. Thought it was steep enough that I needed the talent trot, but I guess not. Yeah, there's an extra life up there, so. But yeah, you can go inside his house and just see all these cool little things. I'm not sure if it's ready yet. Probably not. But if you stand at the right angle, I think it's further into the game. If you stand at the right angle and then just zoom in. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm afraid I can't tell you any more about, okay, this hidden feature until you collect the jigsaw from the Sandcastle game. Okay, so the jiggy in Treasure Trove Cove in the Sandcastle, for those of you who watched my Summer Let's Play special, and again, you'll see it in the overall series. That's how you unlock this feature, so maybe I'll show that to you in a further episode, maybe before I actually get into Clanker's Cavern, because that's the level after Treasure Trove Cove. You can, in theory, go to the levels out of order, sort of, but I'd advise against it just because, especially until you get up to Mad Monster Mansion because there are certain moves that you'll need to co complete Jiggy challenges in the other levels. And you'll need those moves more for the higher levels, so I find it's just an easier thing to just do them in order. Okay, so here we are back again in Gruntilda's Lair. And so that Jiggy was to the left, now we come to the right and we're in the lobby of Mumbo's Mountain. This is the first world. So yeah, he's still talking you through everything. And yep, there's obviously the picture where you would place the Jiggy. It can't be far away. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, you know how to do this. Fill in the missing space with the jigsaw pieces. And then I like how Banjo Tui actually makes this part more challenging so that it's not just getting enough jiggies because then you're just pressing A until the picture is filled. Or as Bottles will tell you later on, you 
believe it's Z, and then you just fill in the picture with all the pieces at once. Yep, that's it. The picture's complete, and the door to Mumbo's Mountain is open. That was such an easy fit. The others may just test your wits. Alright, so I'll cut it off there for this episode, and then I'll get right into going into Mumbo's Mountain for the second episode. So I'll see you in episode two.